Hello YouTube, this is Galway Yu-Gi-Oh here, and this is a brand new deck profile. This time I'm bringing you something really different. It's Hat, and this deck hasn't topped in a couple of years, at least I don't think so. And it uh, used to be pretty good. It was tier 1, it was the best deck for a while around when Jirji was doing its thing with Gear Gear, Gear 3, and it was just doing crazy stuff. This deck is kind of weak now, it's power crept to oblivion really, and it hasn't an awful lot going for it. But uh, when I was looking through decks I could, you know, use Demise, and there was... Clifford, there was the Teller Knights, and there was Yusenju, and I've done two of those deck profiles already, and I'm not a fan of Yusenju at all, I didn't want to touch Yusenju. So I figured, you know, what other decks, and I was looking through my binder, and then I was like, oh, ha, you know, you got your artifacts, all of artifacts with the demise, so I, I decided to put the deck together, and I actually had most of the cards, I mean 99% of the cards, um, for this deck profile, so here you go, There, here you have a, you know, a bonus deck profile for hat, or this version's probably more inclined to be called cat because I'm not maining the hands but rather siding them so yeah let's get into the deck profile and I hope you guys enjoy it especially for newer players you've never seen this deck before first off you got your two curry banded uh, three was a bit cloggy and I liked two two is fine because you don't really want to be running that many normal summons and after the first curry bandit you don't really want to see a second you want to kind of start seeing your you know monsters that are a bit stronger a bit tougher and doing a bit more against your opponent um, what this card does is you know at the end phase you can you know tribute it and um, Mill five cards or excavate five cards, and then you get to add one of the spell traps to your hand, and the rest go to the graveyard. This is great because it plays around demise perfectly. It works so well with demise, and yeah, it's just a generally decent uh, one for one, or probably more of a plus one considering. Uh, otherwise, you'd you know be destroying cards out of your hand anyways. So yeah, uh, two great bandit, three Mermilio. Yeah, it's it's cat or as it usually is called, Hands Artifact Trap Tricks. And this is the Trap Tricks part because, you know, Mermilio is great. It also plays perfectly around the mice because you search a spell and trap card, uh, namely a trap hole card, uh, which means that, you know, it's not stuck in your hand for the end phase to get discarded off the mice, which means, you know, just set it to your side of the field and it's great. Um, yeah, Mermilio, three of, obvious uh, three of, not much to say about her. One die in the end, there's a bit to say about this one because this one can be quite... Bricky, cloggy, and bad. Um, when it's normal summoned, you get a special summon a Traptrix, Mermilio in this case, from your graveyard, and then Mermilio then gets her effect. This allows for an instant rank 4 play, as well as a popping of a back row because of Mermilio, and yeah, that's pretty great, except that conflicts a lot with Demise, and if you don't have a Mermilio in Grave, then there's nothing off its normal summon effect. The reason I decided to just run the one anyways, even though it can be quite weak in this deck, is because when it's special summoned, you know, through Call of the Haunted or Soul Charge or any of those kind of cards, you get to select a bottomless or a trap hole card in your graveyard and then set it to your side of the field and it gets banished next turn, which is amazing. It actually is really, really good, especially in a meta like this, because, you know, you can bring this back with Call of the Haunted, sorry, uh, bring it back with Call of the Haunted, you get to add your, say, bottomless trap hole and set it to your side of the field, it means your opponent cannot or uh, summon a monster with 1500 more attack next turn, or else you get a free banish of their monster. Um, it, it They often won't play into it, but all this card really needs to do is stop your phone from making plays, which it does all of the time. Really good card, actually. Um, I was actually surprised by how good it was. One Thunder King, because, like I explained in my Teller Knights uh, Demise video, you only need to have it in your graveyard to be brought back with Call the Haunted, so it works like a mistake on legs. Mistake doesn't really affect this deck, because the only thing that searches is Mermilio, and I guess Duality too, however, that's not such a problem. Um, so yeah, One Thunder King is fine, just so you can get it in your graveyard, and it's great to normal summon this card, you know, it's 1900, really beefy, and backed up by three or four back row can just win games right there, especially against things like Pepe, which really have not an awful lot of outs to it. Uh, then we have our three artifact monsters, and they make a lot of sense. Artifacts are actually fantastic this format, in fact Sanctum is probably one of the best trap cards in the game at the moment. Um, outside of the fact you have to run these monsters which can be drawn and they're really bad to draw, but outside of that it's amazing. Um, this guy is non-targeting destruction, uh, which is fantastic against so many decks, and this card pretty much locks off the extra deck when special summon during your opponent's turn, which can be an auto win against BAPK. I remember about a month ago I was playing Satel Knight Demise, so I was running the artifact engine in that deck. And I summon this card against um, BAPK, and what would have turned it from their OTK on me into pretty much a 
nothing. Uh, they couldn't do a damn thing. You know, they were stuck with the song boots, the ragged gloves, which I just, you know, attacked over next turn, and a couple of back row. There was nothing they could really do. Um, so yeah, Scythe is actually fantastic, and the artifacts really deserve their space in this deck. In fact, it's one of the only reasons this deck can still compete. Then, of course, you've got our three Demise. Um, not an awful lot about to say about this card. It's fantastic. It's not really that broken, though. A lot of people say it's broken, but it can only really go into slower... Uh, older decks anyways it can't go into the newer great meta decks so i think that kind of balances itself out it's it's a great card for old bad decks um and that's really all i need to say about demise it's great and uh, three duality because when you're running demise this card is pretty much free it's conditioned to mean nothing and it pretty much means excavate three or look at the top three cards of your deck you know add whatever the hell you want to it it's a great card and uh, you don't want to run less than three it does conflict with mistake and uh, Thunder King, but that's not really a problem because you you know you are the player that gets to choose when they use those cards, and thus, you know you can use them whenever you can you can summon them when uh, these cards won't need need to be used. Um, one upstart goblin. Uh, there is no reason not to run upstart. It's great, and especially when there's not an awful lot of great traps to run. Like I was looking through the list of you know trap cards that are running good decks, and you know I was looking through my own traps and seeing what I could run, and there were so few. So. Any card that allows you to get through your deck better than that is welcome. Well, one Space Typhoon, um, I'm usually opposed to running Space in the main deck at all. I'm not running ar any Artifact Ignition because that's not a great card at all in this deck. It's probably better in pure Artifacts, but in a deck that runs just three Artifacts with three Sanctum, it's not great at all. But this card does pop uh, your Artifacts in your ba in your own back row if your opponent is playing no back row at all. So if your opponent is playing something that runs absolutely zero back row, um, this still car this card can still get use if you dead draw an artifact you can pop it to your, to get its effects during your opponent's turn, which is actually really good. Then for our last two spells we've got our one soul charge and one instant fusion, and these are really important for this deck um, because they don't conflict with demise in the fact you can just set them for next turn. Whereas for say something like Dana you'd need to discard it because you can't just like you know set it and get its effect next turn. It doesn't work like that for monsters. And this pretty much allows you to make your only power plays in the deck, these two cards right here. Through Norden, this card means a rank 4, and in this deck, as a deck as slow as this, a rank 4 play is literally a power play. I know that sounds weird in the current meta where a rank 4 play is just, you know, a consistency play, so yeah, it's whatever. Uh, and Soul Charge, of course, allows you to uh, bring back artifacts as well, which means quite a lot of crazy stuff happens, like making, you know, free Pleiades or Volcasaurus. So yeah, you know, uh, important cards, especially Soul Charge, whatever about Interview, you really need Soul Charge in this deck. And then on to our trap cards, we got our one warning, and of course you got your three strike. There's not a lot to say about these, these are four of the best trap four of the best trap cards in the game. In fact I'd say the four best ones. Um so yeah, run these. They're they're very important in a deck like this. Uh, then we got our three Sanctum, which of course are also very important because they're some of the best trap cards in the game. And the card that kind of holds this deck together, aside from Demise, of course, um, it's the card that, you know, allows you to do stuff that other decks can't do, which is, you know, that much disruption through Scythe and Moral Attack against pretty much any deck in the game. You know, you can you can at least shut them down in some way with this card. Um, next we have our three Cold Haunted, and this is extremely important too, because um, if I just go back to my monsters, if you use Cold Haunted during your opponent's turn, all of these monsters uh, are stupid. This turns into a mistake during your opponent's turn through Call the Haunted, which is fantastic, and it stays as a mistake. This turns into a free trap hole card, usually a bottom of certain time space, uh, which is fantastic. This turns into an MST, which is pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty good. This turns into your opponent cannot play Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, if they're using an extra deck, deck, extra deck, deck at least. And this turns into free destruction. So you've you've pretty much you can pop back row, set back row. You can pop any face up card. Uh, it's so much toolbox in this one card. You need uh, call the haunted. It's it's so vital in this deck because there's five cards that just break it. It turns into toolboxing anything. Um, and on to the next trap cards because I'm done. Uh, you know flirting with call the haunted. Uh, you run your three trap hole cards. In fact, I'm thinking or at least considering. Uh, running two time space with the one bottomless because honestly, Traffic Shop All Nightmare is never really better than time space in a lot of situations. 
Uh, I'm still trying to keep it there for the toolboxing aspect, for just so you know that one or two situations where it might be slightly better. Maybe in, say, something like an alternative, where you don't want to spin it back into the deck, or where you, you know, don't want to be paying with too much life. It could be better in that case. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, too bushed. Either, either ratio is fine. But I've got, like, two, uh, going crush root, which might seem odd, but I think this is a very good... Uh, kind of this form. It's good against Blue Eyes, it's great against BAPK, and that's all it needs to be. It's good against Pepe too, and Metal Foes, and all those kind of interesting decks. I mean, you could, you know, knock a Scout out of their hand if they summon out for Scout, you know, to make those silly plays that they do. Um, you know, they make those Infinity plays. You could do this with, like, a Painful Decision or whatever. It's it's great against pretty much every deck, and I'm surprised more decks don't use it. I guess I guess they don't use it because they don't run traps. A lot of decks just don't run traps, and they run a limited number, they're tight with space, and this card is probably a little less useful than stuff like Strike and, you know, maybe Time Space or whatever. So, yeah, just two Call the Haunted. Uh, two Mind Crush, my bad, uh, because it's a great card. Uh, then we have one offs, we have three one offs. I ruined one mistake. Uh, it's kind of an attack choice. It's been working really well for me. It doesn't conflict with much in this deck, as I said. It, it conflicts with three Vermilio and three Pod Duality. And usually this isn't a problem because after you resolve the first Vermilio or the first Pod Duality, you kind of you know get in really your deck anyways. And the idea of this deck as well, just so you know, is to get your adds all out on your first turn. So you know you open with your demise Pod Duality in a perfect situation. Hopefully you do. Um, and you get to resolve both of those, and you don't need to resolve them ever for the rest of the duel because you've already, you know, got your stupidly broken board. Um, you, you know, you just resolve those cards, and then you either, you know, get your Curry Bandit or your uh, Mermilio out, and then you're, you know, good to go for the rest of the duel. So Mistake works quite good in this deck. It does conflict with a couple of things, but I find in general it's just pretty great. Granny Mare is great for the surprise factor, and I was kind of typed for space, although I'm thinking about bumping this up to two just because of how stupid it is. Uh, against certain decks and against decks that play into it, and then one Vandy's emptiness is that one. It's an extremely important card. Uh, it's seen a lot more play now than it was, like say last format, uh, for some reason. Uh, probably because it's good against blue eyes. They don't really have any outs. Um, so yeah, one Vandy's emptiness, and then we're on to the extra deck, which just a word of forewarning is not perfect by any means. It actually is missing things like giant hand, and I probably want to run a few different rank fives or maybe you know uh, some different rank 4s. It's mostly finished, but it, it's not a great extra deck, and you don't really use it all that often, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, one Pleiades, one M7, and one Volcasaurus. In fact, the only card you're going to ever really summon is Pleiades from here, because you're only going to make these out of the Soul Charge play. You can't really make a rank 5 except outside of a Soul Charge play, and Pleiades is the one you 99% of the time want to make. So yeah, that's it for the 5s, and, and of course the 6, I guess. And one Elder Anthony Norton, because you're running the Instant Fusion, that's kind of self-explanatory. Then for the rank 4s, we got the 1 Rephlesia, 1 Lego Stoll, Emerald, 1 Diamond Direwolf, 1 Dweller, 1 Ark, 2 Castell, 1 Dark Rebellion, Exceed Dragon, yeah, uh, 1 Rhapsody and Berserk, 1 Ragnar Zero, and 1 Gaga Cowboy. And that's it for the 15 card extra deck. In fact, not a lot of these cards are ever made because you can't really make them, except for things like, say, this bottom row here. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, you can see those. Um, because generally it's just not worth making anything else. Uh, against BAPK, this card can just win, so you you want to be able to make that. Against uh, Rafflesia is just really good in this deck in general, because there's nothing scarier than facing down this card plus five back row, or four back row, because, you know, what can they really do? Um, one Dime Direwolf, because, you know, you just just to out stuff that's stopping you from playing, but against this deck, there's not an awful lot of things that will stop you from playing at all, so you don't make this anyways. This can out problems too, and it's probably better to out problems than... Uh, Diamond Darwolf in a lot of situations, especially if it's a problem that can be outed by Castell. And, um, yeah, you could, I guess you could make Arc instead of this if you could, if in this situation you run Arc as well, so whatever. And then one Emerald. Emerald's good. It's quite good. If you can Soul Charge play, activate Pleiades' effect, uh, then make an Emerald, you know, you could shuffle back, um, you could shuffle back one of the artifacts back into your deck, which is a good thing, so you have, you know, Sanctum can be used again. Uh, you can shuffle back in one of this card's own materials, and then you can shuffle back, say, like something like, uh, not a curry bandit, but say something like, I don't know, Marmilio, if you've already got one, or Dianea, especially Dianea is quite great to be shuffled back with this, because after you've already, you know, banished, or used its effect once to banish uh, a trap hole in your graveyard, you could then, you know, bring it back into your deck, hope to draw it, and make another rank 4 play, which is crazy good. And um, that's it for the extra deck, and I'm going to show you the side deck because it's important for this deck, simply because it has the hands in it, and that's all it needs to do, because then I can call this deck Hat. Uh, so yeah, 
victory of each hand. This is actually really good. Outside of nostalgia for the namesake of the deck being a hat, uh, the reason you'd run this is for, you know, breaking boards going second. Uh, because if you play game one and you win it, they're going to choose you to go second nearly 99% of the time just off the fact you're playing a deck like that can shut them down turn one no matter what. Players don't like that, they want to be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So they'll ask you to go second, and if you can side this in, you know, siding out things like Demise, siding in out things like Duality, or these two or uh, one or two of them, and siding out some trap cards, you can, you can, you know, summon this card, uh, they won't expect it, and you can, you know, break their board. Against a lot of the decks, this can just, you know, if they if they run back row, assuming they run back row, you can just start crashing cards and, and just win off it. It's, it's stupidly strong. And then you have your 2 maxi, which also come in when you're going second um, just to allow you to draw more cards they, uh, they're they pretty much traps that work for going second uh, then I have the one Regeki and one MST also for going second uh, these are self-explanatory what they come in against Regeki is pretty much everything allows you to clear boards because this deck has a really big problem of uh, getting over big monsters uh, obviously so the idea is not to let them summon big monsters in the first place but if you're going second you cannot guarantee that so you need your Regeki um, I was thinking about running Dark Holes as well, but uh, I opted against it just because of both extra deck space being tight and the fact that you, you know, it's not that great a card. Uh, one space as well. Uh, this is, comes in against backer decks, but it's it comes up in against everything just because you know they can run floodgates or whatever against you. Then for the uh, floodgates that you run when you're also going second, usually game three you'll bring these in if you're now you're you know you're going first again, or if you lose game. Um, game one and you get to choose to go first or second in some situations you might want to go first and so these in. This is for Mermails and BA. So I'm running two Shadow Mirrors as well. The reason I didn't run three Shadow Mirrors and I ran the Soul Train instead is just because Mermails or Atlanteans or whatever uh, are still ran in some environments. So I did like the option, you know, to you know have something for them uh, without, you know, compromising me, my BA PK matchup. So I did bring those in. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. I prefer this than just having three Shadow Mirror. Because B A P K isn't everything, and then I have two Imperial Iron Walls, and these are probably coming out for anti spells, which I just simply don't own. I don't own anti spells, so when I get anti spells, they'll come out for the anti spells. But you could run any, you know, floodgate you want. You could run Light Imprisoning Mirrors, although I don't see why you would. Uh, you run artifacts, of course. Uh, you could run any thing. Uh, I guess you could run decrees, whatever the hell you wanted. These are just. Um, whatever floodgate you want for your current meta. Um, for me, it would be anti spells, although Imperial Iron Wall is still a good card. And that's pretty much it for this deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you guys um, you know had fun. You learned something. Maybe you're not going to make this deck because it's pretty old, and honestly, it's not amazing anymore. It has some serious problems getting over big monsters, like I said. And there's kind of serious problems stopping big monsters. The current power creep just makes it so they can play through traps anyways. Except for blue eyes, which kind of struggles with that. Um, so yeah, again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please click like. Uh, if you want to see more content, I'm uploading pretty regularly now. Uh, just subscribe. And yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.